first part right here. Okay, we're saving some word picks right here into our flat earth files. You say, well, what does ancient Egypt have to do with it? Well, even the ancient Egyptians knew that the earth was not a ball and that there is a truth to the um, flat earth perspective. Let's just put it like that right here. We're saving some of these because we want to teach from them. So we said, well, first we're just going to get this ready, but we're just going to record a, a brief vid right here. And then we'll seek to, you know, when we have more of the word picks, we'll seek to put it together a little bit, a little bit fuller. Since some questions been coming in since we had posted a video concerning the flat earth. The first thing that people will seek to do is they'll try to conceptualize it. And one of the things that make it difficult for us in this so-called Western Gentile state of mind is, is GE. Uh, and they say General Electric, but uh, I will call it um, the Gentile imagination, you know, what we have been made to believe. You know, if you wonder, well, how come 1% is ruling 99%? It's not by overt force, but it's by coercion of a lot of ideas, pseudoscience. We call that pseudoscience. So this vid, we're looking at some of the ancient Egyptian uh, pictures and, you know, word art, as you can see right here. In the, well, that's not one right there, but such as, right? And in seeking to articulate what we are able to see by grace, in the real reorientation of the heavens and earth. You know, what does the heaven, what's the true structure of the heavens and, and the earth based on Jah's word, not based on what the pseudoscience, you know, has, has told us. What is the real, and we're looking here at also uh, the ancient zodiac, they call it the zodiac or the heavens from, um, you know, uh, Dendera, right, from Dendera. And people say, well, how could they know these things? In fact, if you notice, they'll tell us this is just ancient Egypt, but a lot of their so-called top scientists, right, and those who have gotten the claim have studied this, but then they'll seek to tell you, you know, out of a, kind of a religious spookism, you know, not to even look at it or discern that, listen, the Bible says that Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egypts, and he was mighty in word and deed. And there was this particular image right here that came to mind as we are exploring the so-called earth is not a globe, my um, perspective and the flat earth, so-called flat. And often we say it's not flat like a disc, flat. And we'll probably do another vid to bring out that point. But in the revelation, I'll say it's a revelation. What happens is this, that you look at the science of it, and they'll say that the sun is 93 million miles away. Well, 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 how do they know this? They'll say, oh, through this, through, this, through this theory of light and this and that. No, have you really gone there? So if they lied to us about the things that we can verify, why are we to believe them? Just to believe them. I mean, if they want to give us their theories, ones might say, I'm presenting my theory right here. I'm saying that even the ancient Egyptians, right? Even the ancient Egyptians knew that the earth was flat. That's what we're going to call this one right here. The ancient, even the ancient Egyptians knew that the earth was flat. And this is one reason why we can find a confirmation to the Torah or the Bible, because even the Bible, the New Testament says that Moses was learned in all of the what? All of the wisdom of the Egypts. Actually it says Egypt, the translators say the Egyptians, but we can get into those those points of detail at another time. You notice in the in the oldest uh teaching in the Egyptian school, right? In the Egyptian school of thought, which Moses, the author of the five books of Moses, or a scribed author of the five books of Moses. Of course, some of you say, how could he write about his own death? Well, you have to remember that Moses was part of a brotherhood, a priest of the Hebrews, right? So yes, they continued and they wrote that part there, but you know, people try to be funny, but here's what's funny. 
What's funny is that what we've been dismissing, such as the Bible, right, and even some of these th- these word picks and art that we have, such as right here. This is, um, um. This is said to be Geb, right? They tell us, well, this is the god Geb, right? And they say, this is the goddess Newt, right? But this is this is Earth, right? Representing Earth. Remember, this was like a, a way of teaching children. Just as we teach children some moral lessons and certain other things through examples, through types. Now, recall that Moses, right? Our brother Mashu, Moshe, right? Musa, in his first book, he said that man was... Created from what? The dust of what? The earth. So man was created from the dust of the earth. Now, when man was asleep, according to Moses' first book, right? And a, a bone was taken from him, a chromosome, but they'll tell you a rib bone. Okay. Ribeye. The bone was taken, right? A bone was taken from Adam, right? And from that, the woman was made, but more correctly, the woman was built, right? So basically where she came from, well, she was a gift from the Almighty and the Almighty, he dwell in heaven. So you see right here how Newt, right, is represented as the sky. Now, if you notice, and this is what's made this very interesting to study. Now we begin to recognize that Moses really has the key to Egyptology, what they call Egyptology and all the cometisms and isms, what resolves all those schisms and isms is the wisdom, right? The wisdom that Moses, right? So that Moses was learned in all the wisdom. The, the wisdom was like college university, because even today, as we mentioned before, they study the the so-called um um, a horos- not a horoscope, but it's a, the zodiac, the zodiac. They call it the zodiac, the mazarot. In the scriptures, called the mazarot. That's why I say mazotov, right? They say the mazarot, right? Of, um, dendera. And there's much to that. But here, this vid, even the ancient Egyptians knew, my, right, that the earth, my, right, that the earth was flat. Even the ancient, most of the ancient cultures understood that. Now, of course, when you first say flat, people think, you mean flat, flat? You know what I mean? Like a disc is flat. You mean flat, flat like that? Let's do this right here. Excuse me, brothers and sisters. Let us go to our flat earth folder because we want to give a brief comparison side by side in this. Okay, so we go to our flat earth folder right here. We've been saving some now. As we mentioned before, it was by revelation that we saw it because we read, you know, ones who say, well, really, the earth is flat and they give their evidence such as and we'll point them out again. World's uh, was the world's last chance ministry. We found some of the readings and the feedings there to be very interesting, especially concerning the flat earth and also Sabbath keeping the lunar and the solar, you know, some principles of it, even some some paperwork that they had there for ones and ones who are Sabbath keepers and would like to either take that time off from work. Some some very good some very good advice. Let's just put it like that. Some very good advice that was given, right? So we just point out to, but we're pointing to their site right now because of, um, let's do this right here, because of some of the information that we read there. And I was reading through, you know, some of the frequently asked questions. Because people say, well, if the earth is flat, how is it that we see what they call it again? Eclipses. <laughs> You know, and NASA must be right because they are even able to predict eclipses. Listen, primitive pagan and so-called heathen bush peoples and the north, south, east and west were able to um, predict eclipses. That's not a biggie. We can you know what? Let's give them a round of applause. Now they know how to predict so-called eclipses. That's 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 no biggie, so forth and so on. But those frequently asked questions, because some of what we heard, we said, you know, that makes a lot of sense. First of all, how are we going to trust these the, the Gentiles or the Goyim, this this uh this BS, the Babylon system, on things that we can't see and verify for ourselves? You, you see something very interesting right there? Remember See, this is the land right here, and 
when we compare that view with this view right here, what is the difference? Right? What notice if they wanted to have the woman wrap around, seeing that this is a kind of an abstract ancient art, they could have had her wrap around. Right? But notice that the man or Geb, right? Geb, Gebre, the earth worker, Geb, he's laying down. Moses' first book, he tells us that man was what he was, he was created from the, you know, from the dust. I uh, reformed that he was formed, actually not created from the dust, but form. It's very, very important. Form from the dust, right, of the ground. So we see, see man laying down right here. And even the type, you know, the male and the female is very, very interesting. And notice the stars are in her body. See how the ancient Egyptians pictured it is that the sun would kind of like go in her mouth and will come out from her womb, you know, or in that fashion when it went through the heavens and the sky. Now, it might sound funny to us today, but what they were doing in almost like childlike speak or, or in like in, in, in elementary language, like what we would have learned we're in kindergarten. You remember ancient Egyptian was likened to the garden. It's very interesting how how the land of Egypt was according to the scriptures, likened to the garden. So it's this picture here of Newt, the sky, let's call it the sky principle, right? The feminine sky principle and Geb, right? The masculine earth principle. When they get into this God, goddess kind of stuff, then they start to go into a lot of their kind of spookism, you know, like superhero, like Superman, Marvel comics sort of thing. That's not the way the ancients and viewed it. Remember what the what it says that Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egypts. No wonder they wanted. No wonder they killed Stephen. Stephen, who testified to that. Remember afterward, it said that the people were in a great uproar. Right? You know, the, or the Jews, we can say. And, and Saul was there. Saul is the pre, the pre Paul name. Now here's our conception of it right here. Here's what we have been able to see by revelation. Right. When we looked at the different models that are out there, right, we see from the different models that are out there that the earth, first of all, is half material. Right. It is half material, or half cond- condensed, condensated. Right. It's half condensed. We often use this example. Right. And what would be good right here? would be for us to take this picture right here and put this side by side. We often liken it, and this is from Revelation. When I say Revelation, this is from reading what certain ones have put out concerning, hey, you know what? They've been, like a lot of us, we talked about the sun is 93 million miles away. You know, and I said, wait, 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 wait. Where do we get that number from? Why is it 93? It could be 90 million miles away. It could be 36 million miles away. It could be 3 million miles away. It could be 6,000 miles away. I mean, how do we know how far away it is? Because, well, they tell us these things. Now, notice, these are the same ones. Notice, these are the same, I'm talking about the same um, world, the seclorum, the world, and the God of it. Remember, the God of this world is not the God and Father of our Black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMu. Uh-oh, did we say black right there? See, it's those obvious things that they lied to us about that should make us take a little bit of caution at their theories of what the earth is like. The earth is a ball spinning. And well, why don't we all spin off? Because of gravity, another theory, right? That when you really study it, and this is what I love about the brothers and sisters out there. A lot of folks out there, some of them were people who didn't accept anything in the in the Bible or Christianity because of the, how men and people had corrupted it from among many times their own men and people. But as he begins to study such issues like this and really begin to then look, you know, with a from paranoia to metanoia, <laughs> you know, because this concept of what they tell us is going on, the math doesn't even matter. Up. I'm talking about the, the the popular theory. They say, well, the flat earth. So what they try to do is mock it. And they try to say, well, when some say that the earth is flat, right? They try to show it as flat as a disc. Well, that's not what the biblical view. In fact, what we're showing right here on the screen is kind of like a side by side. Right. This is based on what the ancient Hebrew concept of the universe. And remember, the Hebrew concept of the universe begins with Moshe. 
And according to the Bible, it says that Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egypts, right? Of upper and lower Egypt, the lower Egypt that he was in. And then his, his Ethiopian, his Medeanite father-in-law, you know, Jethro, so forth and so on. Because there were ancient schools, right? Out of Africa, you know, out of the Afro-Shemitic roots, you know, the Nile Valley civilization was established by the Nile Highlands. Remember how the Bible says that he sits on the circle of the earth? You know, if you look at even the fact that the Nile River, one of these rivers we find in the very beginning in the Bible, it flows in a completely opposite direction. And you begin to look at even the Rift Valley. It almost is like the the birthplace of the earth uh, when, when you look at it. And there's also a lot of other things that connect with this when they try to go into the lower firmament. That's what, what, what so-called space. They say they've been into space and so-called outer space. They've been nowhere. They've been just a little above the clouds. That's the only place they've been, just a little above the clouds. But even the ancient Egyptians knew that the earth was, from perspective, flat, not this ball bouncing around. They also knew that the earth was half material. What we mean by half material? We mean half condensed Right, half condensed. In other words, uh, let's see, do we have a, well, we often give this example, like an orange. Say you take an orange, right? And you cut an orange in half, right? And you just have the one half of the orange. You take off the top half and you put it elsewhere. Now you only have the bottom half of the orange, similar to this right here. Remember it says the firmament, he created a firmament. Now, if you look up that word firmament in the Hebrew, it says an ark. Like the ark, the rakia, the rakia in the Hebrew, the rakia. This is speaking of Newt. Because just because the ancients like the Egyptians fell off, remember what Josh says. Josh says that they're my people too. Right? Even the Canaanites, they fell off too. He told the Israelites, don't do what the Canaanites did to me. So that means he must have had a relationship with these people. That means that certain ancient truths we will find out there. It's whether these truths Right. So this view of 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 heaven and earth, it conforms with the Hebrew concept of the universe or of the creation. Now, some I know brothers and sisters, and in fact, a few have even kind of texted I on this and say, you know what? I hear what you're saying and I've been checking it out, but I've been having a little bit of trouble. Not trouble so much. I don't want to say trouble, but it's a little difficult. It's a little challenging to 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 see this in their mind's eye. And I overs that because even ourselves, we were able to, how can I say, see where the where, where the, the new perspective makes sense. But we're like, wait, hold on. That means that all this time, all the things I was saying, even when sometimes we will make a a joke or a reference. Oh, you must believe the earth is flat or the Europeans believe the earth was flat. That wasn't even what the whole thing with Galileo and the Pope was about. That wasn't even, it was a whole um, Halegian dialectic. You know, even though the problem, reaction, solution, you know, it was this whole problem, reaction, solution sort of a thing right there. So you'll see that there's some people who will be putting out some of this artwork out there and it will kind of show the earth like almost like flat like a disc. But that cannot be true from the Hebrew concept of it because there's the pillars of the earth, the foundation of the earth. There is Sheol. There's also the deep. Remember, basically it's all water. Think about it. But water we know from even what we can verify on earth. We know that water can be frozen solid. Water can be liquid. Water can be a gas. And this is just within the, the laws of this earth and this structure that we're on. But there's waters above, right? There's waters above. This is where they have not gone into. Right. They have barely gotten into this area up here. Like they say, the firmament, actually this right here, the, the sun and the and the moon would be in the firmament because Newt right here would represent the firmament. That's where the stars are. That's where the stars are really right here. So um, the so-called astronauts 
astronaut, not, not, newt, right? They only got as far as this area above the clouds. You can see that even clearly. I saw this, this picture where they had a picture allegedly from outer space. And it seems like it's probably true. And sometimes if you look at those pictures, you know, why do they always put the curved lens? You got to ask yourself, why do they always put the curved lens on it? And what was telling about the picture, if you notice the top part of the picture and the lower part was like the, the view of the earth, right? From just, you could tell it was just above the clouds, but then the camera perspective where you can see where it looks like a, like the moon, right? Was in front of the sun, right? And then behind the sun and the moon were clouds where they said they were in outer space, where they say, quote, end quote. And you say, well, hold, hold on for a moment. Clouds behind the sun. Look at some of the photos of the moon and the sun very carefully. And you would notice clouds behind the sun and the moon. Stop for a moment. If this is 93 million miles away, right, then what is the clouds doing out there 93 million miles? I'm not saying there's not clouds out there, but what I'm trying to say is that this is really within this orbit right here, which is a part of a space. Right. Some say this is the, 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 what is the Van Allen? I think you talk about the Van Allen belt right there. Right. Kyber, you know, the Van Allen belt right there. Right. Where they have not been anywhere. Even the moon. They say they might have been to the moon. They might have been to the moon. Definitely not the time they went when they tell you that they went to the moon. That wasn't them going to the moon. I mean, it's kind of very clear because the first question you have to ask is where's the stars? Right. And then you have to ask yourself, why is the picture of the earth in this? That's another thing. These pictures we've seen. A lot of those pictures are NASA photoshops. Even the pictures where we see, you see, see, maybe they show you Africa, right? They show you like Africa right there and they'll say, okay, that's a, that's a view from space. Really? Tell me if you had that such a good view from space, what's the first thing if you went into so-called Alice space you want to do? Turn the camera around. You know what I mean? You know, like when you go someplace, say, I'm finally here. Look, I'm, I'm at the Grand Canyon. You look at people's pictures when they go to place they really want to be to, that they, they always wanted to go. They, they turn the camera around. You know, they got these, they got these high powered, we got this technology where you can get super clear pictures. While the fuzzy pictures from outer space, the video pictures, and then they give you these really corny, kind of like these grainy kind of things. You know what I'm saying? So you got to ask yourself, this is just a, a few of the first thoughts. Let's just put it like that. The first thoughts. I'm already longer in this video than I really expect it to be. It's basically that the, even the ancient Egyptians, right? Even the ancient Egyptians, they knew, right? Even they knew that the earth was, was not a globe, right? Right. The earth is not a globe. It's not a ball bouncing around in space around the sun. Don't worship the sun. Right? It's the sun worshipers. It's this ancient conspiracy. Right. You know, it's this ancient conspiracy against the almighty that has risen up again. The earth is not a globe. And in fact, there's actually no such thing as a singular South Pole. <laughs> Right. No way. No way. See, it's about John's word. It's about John's word and what he has said. It's about his point of view. It's about John's view. So as we're taking time to begin to actually, before we can really fully enjoy John's view, we have to cast away a lot of these vain imaginations. Right. Because you said the imagination of men and people just evil continually. Right. There are many questions. Right. About this subject matter. We're not saying that we're expert in these. Right. But we need to look at the biblical as well as the verifiable, the principles that we have in the Bible. The earth basically has one face. Right. It's the face of the earth. John can see the whole earth in one view, in one point of view. Right. And, and from one perspective, because see, draw back a little bit. Let's draw back right here. If you draw back right here, you see the heaven of heavens. What's interesting that's in this region is where the Dogon people were looking. Remember the Dogon people? There's this West African tribe that with their so-called naked eye, they could see Orion and Cyrus and the dog star up in this constellation that Amos 5 and 8 says, seek him 
that made the seven stars and Orion. That would be in the northernmost region. Brothers and sisters, that is the center. That is the center. In fact, if you look at night skies over a progression, a long period of time, you'll see all of the stars. Remember, this is a two-dimensional view, but all of the stars circle around this immovable spot. That is the center. In fact, the sun actually, right, circles, it spins in to the, to, to the north pole, and then it spins out over a yearly shana, a yearly course, right? Ja is able to look upon the face of the earth. It, ne- it doesn't say faces of the earth. Right. So many of us need to really start to study these things. No, the earth is not flat like a quarter or a coin. There's some goofy pictures that are out there, but it has a flat surface on top of it's like a flat surface on top of a half sphere. In other words, half of the sphere is condensed enough that it is what we would call solid and material. The other half of the sphere. So in a sense, If you were to look at the earth, there is a roundness to it, but it's only that half of it, it is material and the earth is that flat part of it. I don't know if ones are, if ones can get that right there, but the firmament, remember this, the firmament is between the heavens above and around the firmament. So here they have the firmament to be this part right here. And you can see that this matches, right? What the ancient, the school of thought and the schools of thought at ancient Kemet taught. Remember Moses? He was learned in all the wisdom of the Egypts. So no, it's not flat like a coin. You're going to see these goofy pictures on the internet that project that false, that pseudoscience flat as a coin image. That's not the flat earth, right? That we are speaking about. That's when we say it's not flat, flat, right? It's not flat, flat in that sense. Now, the next key is that the earth does not move, like spin around. You know, there's this idea that the earth is spinning around, right? Of course, the almighty, he causes the earth to shake when he seeks the earth to shake. But um, some very good questions that we have to touch on. Um, But the true answer is not like the pseudoscience of Babylon make-believe, of the Babylon system. All All you need to do is ask yourself this. If they lied to us about things we can clearly see, that are discernible and verifiable here on earth. Why are we just going to trust them about things way up in outer space? You see what I'm saying? And because they have projected this in their movies and their media, notice that things like Star Trek and Star Wars were the first to really um, reprogram people's view, right? And, and to get people to believe this pseudo Baal and Ashtaroth and, and Venus and, and Jezebel w- w- worship. When I say Jezebel worship, I'm talking about like the Catholic church, you know, an abomination because they were part of bringing in this view. You might be, be like, well, the Galileo, he shamed the, he, he shamed the Pope. No, actually it was an inside job, <laughs> right? There's a video out there that I find to be very good. The flat, the flat earth is biblical truth, the satanic deception exposed is out there on the, it's out there like on the YouTube. And of course, at first, a lot of this is hard for us to imagine. Why? Because our imaging, you know, the way, the, the way we, we imagine has been programmed. Cause right now, if you think about the earth and, and space or whatnot, you're going to think about y- your, your imagination has been informed by what the movies and the media have given us. You know, and we've seen in so many different ways. You know, we've seen movies, some movies or TV shows or whatever that we might like. And they have given us this view. Oh, look at them. They're going to this planet. The planet is spinning around and that's like earth. And it, it reinforces this, um, this fallacy. Right. But now if we look at ancient Egypt for a moment, I thought this was so very interesting. Once again, even the ancient Egyptians knew that the earth wasn't flat, right? The flat earth, even the ancient Egyptians knew it. Now, when you look at some of these right here, it's interesting because some will say, well, what about this part here? This part here where you see Shu, ones will show you Shu. This is Moses. This is, this is Moses and the Israelites. Remember how it's talked about how the, the pavement under his feet was lapis lazuli? Notice the color of, of, of Newt's body, of the heavens. 
even in Amharic and the ancient gut is Ethiopic to say Samayawi is to say blue, but as to say heavenly. So this is, this is actually, you can see here, even the elongation of it, because it, heaven, because it's a half, it's, it's a, it's a half, I want to say it's spiritual. There's a, there's a part that is fully con- more fully condensed. There's a part that is half condensed. That's water. Water is half condensed. It's half spiritual. And then there's another type of water, right, of which so-called space. And when you study ancient Egypt, they say, well, the sun would actually go into Newt's mouth and come out of her womb. This is where it's like the birth thing or giving to birth of a new day. So we both have a parable and a metaphor, right? And then when you see this picture right here, you know what this is. This is, remember when Moses was against the Amalekites and they was in that the valley and everything like that. And I think Joshua and Hor, right? They kept Moses' arms up because we say, well, what about the ram right there? Well, that was the symbol of Kanun the creator God. So we understood these symbols. See, even Jacob says that, you know, uh, he said that he was in a land where he, what's the Psalm that says he was in a, a strange language where they spoke a language, a strange language he didn't understand. Right. In the sense, this symbolism is a strange language. Right. Not that all of the Israelites understood this strange language. This symbology, like a lot of us don't understand how scientists, you know how scientists use all these kind of um, symbols and math and and different shapes. Another scientist can read it. He can understand the code. Moses, in understanding the true science of what the Egyptians and other ancient Sabian peoples already knew, right, was able to write that within the Hebrew explaining, because it doesn't say that the Lord said to Moses, this is how the heavens work. No, Stephan already explained that in Acts of the Apostles, where he said that Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egypts, right? And so we see this symbology here of Newt, especially in the, in, in the, in the, in, in the original way, this was the first concept. Man comes from what? The dust. You know, man is Adam. He comes from the Adama which is that reddish brown. Notice the color, the reddish brown. Womb man, right? You know, womb man. Well, man couldn't really say where. No one knows the creation of womb man, only the almighty when he built her. But that that idea of that heavenly gift, you know what I'm saying? That heavenly gift being created from above based on that same principle. Well, we're not going to get all into that right now, are we? We're already a little bit over time right here, at least with this right here, just to give a kind of a a general view right here, right? To just show this side by side right here. If you can see this side by side right here, um, this is a, a more better biblical um, view. Right. And to show that even the ancient Egyptians and other ancient peoples, well, I'll say the Egyptians, because this is where Moses, our connection is with those truisms that even the ancient Kamites, right, even the ancient Kamites knew. Of course, they got that from the ancient Ethiopians. And then Ethiopia is one of those rivers there in the very beginning. So we get to the womb, you know, we get to the womb, the birthplace, right, of uh we could say creation on this flat earth. <laughs> Amen. Now, there's not, that doesn't mean there's not valleys and they're not mountains, but the orientation of it, just as you see, see Geb right here. Geb basically laying, laying flat, you know, you know, Geb laying flat and see this half arc is so very telling of the firmament and the stars in her body, right? That's where the stars are. People think the stars are way out here somewhere. No, they're not. The stars are part of that curtain, right? It says how he stretched out the heavens like a curtain, right? He erected it like a tent, right? So, um, yeah, I mean, I mean, this is, this is brother Yad and brother Ross Iadonis of the Lion and Tribe of Jewish Society. More to come on this. I hope this helps some of the brothers and sisters. I, you know, um, see it for themselves, but just take the time to enjoy Jah view. As I say, how can we just accept their word on, on things in so-called outer space? 
You know, and they say, oh, we've seen the other planets are out there. They're just like Earth. Show us a picture of it. Wouldn't that be the greatest proof? Show us a picture. How do they know? Oh, it's, we're looking at the infrared. Okay, yeah, right. <laughs> Shalom, brothers and sisters.